Tell me where to smash. Interlopers! Defilers! The mutant world is one with very few limitations. As such, the existence of immortal beings who treat the world as its personal play toy or puppet is not unnatural at all. And in this verse, that role has been taken by the externals. The externals are loosely knit and connected to each other by a psychic link, setting them aside from the other immortals. Together, they externally orchestrate the events taking place on planet Earth and, in the process, amass tremendous wealth and political control over the planet. In this video, we will talk about 9 to 10 such externals and their stories as a group. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How it all started. Origins and the early years of the externals. The externals began to exist at different points across history, with some being far older than others. With a psychic connection linking these immortal beings to one another, they gradually banded together and began to call themselves the High Lords. Saul and Nicodemus were the first to feel the psychic link and went looking for others just like them. They can also sense it when one of them is killed or when they are revived thanks to their link. This ability allows them to summon one another whenever necessary and across long distances. Other than that, the externals are directly responsible for Apocalypse's rise to power. Within the externals, everyone represents an intangible and abstract concept. Absalom stands for despair, Gideon for the opportunity, Kandra for guile, Burke for fortitude, Nicodemus for wisdom, Cruel for ferocity, Saul for patience, Apocalypse for evolution, and Selene for corruption. As we go deeper into the video, you will begin to understand how these intangible concepts relate to its fellow externals. For example, Selene has always had a bad dynamic with others of her kind and the externals, making her an appropriate candidate for corruption. They also had distinctive personalities instead of being like a stereotypical immortal super powerful group. For example, while Cruel often worked for others, Kandra and Selene were the types to stick to doing their bidding. The externals started to get active sometime around the middle of the 12th century. One of the externals, Kandra, was asked to join the League of the High Lords, which was initially synonymous with being an external, but later became a subset within the group that supervised the others. She declined the offer because she wanted to avoid spreading her power within a unit. She would rather keep it to herself. This decision made her the object of others' disdain and wrath, so she realized that she had to take action. Kandra decided to extract her life's energy as an immortal being and then conceal it in a stone. Some other externals such as Cruel, Saul, Selene, Nicodemus, and En Sabah Nur decided to help her with the ritual. During the ritual, Nur realized that he could have taken her powers while the others still did not agree with Kandra's actions. The externals were omnipresent throughout several world events, such as Gideon being on board with Christopher Columbus during his first voyage. He was also involved in accelerating the events in 1776 leading to the American Revolutionary War, making it evident to the readers that the externals have been involved in the events of the world, controlling everything from the background. He was also involved in the 1963 John F. Kennedy assassination plan. The externals grew stronger and tighter with time by the end of the 19th century. Burke, Gideon, Saul, Nicodemus, and Absalom acted as the authorities who looked over the externals, making them the high lord. They prevented any obstacles and stopped those who wished to interfere in their plans, and if anyone wanted to kill an external, they would kill them first, stripping them of their powers and godhood. Around this time, En Sabah Nur was rising to power, and Kendra wanted to stop it, only to acquire his ability which would allow her to fold space. The others would not do anything about it, and sent the Victorian-era scientist Dr. Nathal Milbury to do something, and so he did as he used his new metamorphic powers to bring down Kendra in in the end, Milbury revealed to her that the High Lords had sent for him to defeat her since she was going against another external, which they would not stand for. In the end, she was punished. During the modern days, the externals looked for the next member, who was believed to be a heroic being named Sunspot. Gideon had overlooked Sunspot's life from the very beginning, as he could anticipate his heroic future. So when his team, the New Mutants, were on the verge of collapsing, Gideon pulled the strings to cause the hero's father to die. Ultimately, 
Unfortunately, Sunspot was left with no choice but to leave the New Mutants and join Gideon, despite being oblivious to Gideon's true purpose. With Sunspot gone, the New Mutants fell under the leadership of Cable, a time-traveling mutant, who you may remember as the antagonist in Deadpool 2. He renamed the association to the X-Force, and he considered the mutant name Cannonball to be a potential external, thanks to his experiences gained from time traveling. Cable was right since Cannonball, after being killed by Sauron, was revived. This meant that now the externals could sense him as well. As such, they headed to get their hands on Cannonball, but not without sending Cruel to kill Cable to make the process easier. To their disbelief, Cruel was defeated, and the X-Force revealed the truth after confronting Gideon. Sunspot, who was previously recruited while being kept in oblivion, kept the externals after learning of their true intentions. Later, Saul often kidnapped members of the X-Force to coerce Cannonball into becoming one of them. However, neither did the X-Force ever interfere in the affairs of the externals, nor did they ever lose against Saul and Gideon when they pulled their dirty moves. The externals still did not give up on Cannonball, mainly because a dangerous virus was on the loose. This virus, known as the Legacy Virus, had already killed Nicodemus and Burke. The others believed that Cannonball was the key to solving the problem, but even he could not do anything about it. The X-Force tried helping the externals once again when the latter was betrayed by one of them, Selene. For some reason, the 17,000-year-old external began to kill her peers as she absorbed their life forces. But once again, the X-Force failed to truly help the externals out since Selene managed to escape. But since the externals were immortal, they could not die from being killed by Selene or from a virus, so they were revealed to be alive. Later, the externals Kandra, Saul, Nicodemus, Selene, Gideon, Cruel, and Absalom were summoned to Krakoa by Apocalypse. He wished to sacrifice them, and they were ultimately forced to do so. In the end, the ancient bones of Nicodemus, Saul, Kandra, and Cruel were turned into stones in the same way. Kandra had turned her life energy into a stone. This stone was then used to power the external gate, which allowed the sentient island of Krakoa to enter the pocket dimension known as the Otherworld. In a separate issue, it was later revealed by Selene and confirmed by Cable that Cannonball was not an external, even though he could revive himself from death. In fact, Apocalypse's status as an external remained for debate for quite some time, because according to Selene, he used technological means to keep himself alive. The thing is, the other externals can be killed as well by destroying their hearts, but it is their life forces that remain immortal, so when an external's heart is destroyed, they cease to exist, but their life force gets channeled into the other externals, making them stronger than before, and these externals can use the life force to revive the others. However, two externals would need to coexist within the same time frame to pull off this feat. Before we get down to discussing the externals, with some having an unclear status, many may wonder, what differentiates the externals from the Eternals? Well, the Eternals were a race of humans immortal, ancient, and ridiculously powerful. They used to exist on Earth and Titan after the Celestial, Nazar, the Calculator, created them. They have existed since the Homo Erectus dominated the land mass, making them millions of years old. On the other hand, the Externals are mutants who are extremely old, but not nearly as old as the Eternals. To understand them better, it is best for us to talk about every external individually. Absalom, Despair. Starting off the list with Absalom, who represents the intangible concept of despair. He had joined the externals before revealing his immortality or experiencing his first death. The being had a prince-like look with his long blonde hair, regal clothing, and sharp facial features. He was arrogant in his early years and went on to retain them in the future. However, he wished to be better, which was revealed following his first death when he expressed his desire to do life right at the next time. Even after being revived, Absalom once again became an impulsive and violent being. However, he had learned to apologize and be humble when necessary, even though nothing changed Gideon's hatred towards him. He was one of the externals who sent Dr. Nathan Milbury to prevent Kandra from stopping N. Sabah Nur's rise to power, which the externals had orchestrated. Later, towards the end of the 19th century, Absalom adopted the name Corey Flynn and lived as a violent thief and murderer. In fact, he had to be on the run in six states. 
He was also the first one to sense Cannonball as an external when the latter was revived for the first time. In terms of powers and abilities, there's the obvious one with him being immortal. He ceased to age after his first revival. With these, he could rapidly heal and resurrect himself. There's the other obvious ability of his to experience the psychic link with the other externals, the machinations of which we have already explained. In fact, these aforementioned abilities are present in all the externals because these are the characteristics required to be a part of the group. When it comes to personal abilities, Absalom could perform bone manipulation using his mutant physiology. Razor sharp bony spikes protruded from his skin, including his fingers. He then manipulated those bones the way he intended to, and used them as swords or bullets. He could even extend them when and if necessary. Burke Fortitude. Next up, we have Burke, who once again sports long blonde hair like Absalom. However, his face is chiseled and ragged, giving him a more menacing appearance. He is the Fortitude in the Branches of Eternity, as per his representative abstract quality. Now, Burke's mindset was more realistic. After living for a century, he was done with life. He had loved ones who were deceased, and desperately wished to die to reunite with them, instead of staying back and being a marionette to world events. However, he ended up joining the externals, and with nothing to do for the rest of eternity, he hopped onto their bandwagon of gaining political and monetary control over Earth's destiny. Boredom makes you do weird things. Burke has been killed quite a number of times throughout his lifetime. In the 17th century, he was burnt at the stake. In the next one, he was guillotined, and after that, he was hanged. In the mystery of the external storyline, he helped the High Lords get to Cannonball. They gathered in the Swiss Alps and feared their plan to draw the attention of Charles Xavier. Xavier and the X-Men. He even disliked their plan of using Cruel to get to Cannonball. His fears turned out to be true when Cruel failed his mission and Cable intervened. Ultimately, Cruel was hospitalized after being defeated and he ratted the High Lords out to the X-Men. Burke later caught the legacy virus and, on the verge of death, used his abilities to let the externals know of Sam Guthrie, or Cannonball, who he thought was going to be the architect of their salvation and an external. But as usual, he was revived much to his disdain. Stain. This time, he was not interested in being with the externals and decided to live by himself in Washington. In terms of powers, Burke has the ability to foresee future events a few days before they take place. The time is false. Chosen ones. Kendra, Guile. Kendra is the Assassin's Guild of New Orleans and the benefactress of the thieves. She helps the thieves acquire power and expects large sums of money in exchange. In terms of physical appearance, Kendra sports the stereotypical muscular but skimpily clad look. She has blonde hair that resembles a mane, and her outfit looks like a much more sensual version of the Scarlet Witch outfit. Kendra spent many centuries balancing both guilds until the X-Men known as the Gambit retrieved Apocalypse's Elixir of Life to save his lover, Belladonna. Kandra was the one who wanted the elixir, but due to Gambit, the guilds she managed could not get their hands on the potion, thus causing a turbulence in their deal. Resentful of the event, Kandra wanted to get back at Gambit, and what better way to do it than to involve Belladonna in the plan? She blackmailed the girl into trapping Rogue from the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and made her kidnap Cody, her first boyfriend. She then tried to kill her, but Belladonna was able to survive the situation, and even rescued Cody. We already know of Kendra's ordeal with the gem where she had stored her life force. This would allow her to attain true immortality, but the stone was later stolen in Cairo by a young Storm. Kendra tried to retrieve the stone and trap Storm, but Cyclops' intervention resulted in the Heartstone's destruction. Naturally, Kendra had also ceased to exist, but of course, she did not die as her psyche had continued to live. She gradually regained her body and used the deaths of others to gain more strength. From this, she acquired the ability to feed off death and perform telekinesis. She then decided to drain the life forces of Wolverine and Scarlet Spider, but failed in her mission when she was killed once again, this time with Scarlet Spider stabbing her in the head. With her telekinetic abilities, Kandra was able to levitate herself as well as others. She could stealthily hide from being detected as well. Amidst the battle, Kandra could expel psionic energy bolts. Another insane feat she was able to pull off, thanks to her telekinesis, was genetic manipulation. She could alter molecules, which helped her activate or deactivate the mutant powers in others, giving her a massive edge in battle. She could also perform mind control. Cruel. 
Ferocity, cruel, judging by his name, was very mean. Ferocious, barbaric, and extremely cruel. So much so that he had apparently operated a Nazi chamber purely for entertainment. He also did not have any sophisticated mutant abilities like controlling the weather or mind. Instead, he had tremendous brute strength alongside purple skin and a ridiculously huge body that made him look like a titan. His origins are predated back to the first century when he was apparently a berserker. His powers also made him the perfect candidate to be used by the other external to perform assassinations. He was later exiled from the externals. Soon, Gideon found him and sent him to attack the X-Force. He also had to find Cannonball, but was later defeated by the mutant Richter, who managed to put the cruel external in a body cast. The externals did not stop there, however, as they kidnapped members of the X-Force to get to Cannonball. Around this time, the X-Force abducted Cruel from his hospital room, but since Cruel wished to humble his teammates, he gave away Saul's location, allowing the X-Force to rescue their members. Later, due to the threat he posed, he was dumped in a Pacific Ocean. He was killed once again when Selene drained his life force. In a separate arc, Cruel joined Cable's team to battle the externals. In terms of powers, Cruel's brute strength came alongside tremendous agility, reflexes, endurance, and speed. He also had hair that was coiled into strands that mirrored whips. Meanwhile, his gauntlets were clawed. Gideon, Opportunity. Gideon represented opportunity in Thread in the Tapestry of the Infinite, and rightfully so, since he created and took several opportunities that had a tremendous impact on world history. Gideon wore a red and gold suit and sported a bald head. He was originally from 15th century Spain and was part of Columbus's expedition. Around this time, he contracted scurvy and passed away. However, as the ship reached New World or America, Gideon was resurrected since he was an external. As his life continued, Gideon amassed tremendous wealth and learned of the externals who manipulated and orchestrated world events. We already know of his involvement with the American Revolutionary War of Independence in 1776 alongside the Kennedy assassination. In the modern years, Gideon built Ofra Industries, a corporate giant that intended to dominate Earth. During the Cannonball story arc, Gideon suggests the externals use Cruel to kill Cable. However, Gideon's judgment turned out to be for the worst as Cruel ultimately ended up in a body cast, and the X-Men got to the externals. In terms of powers, Gideon had a superhuman enhancement assimilation. He could acquire the powers of those who were in his proximity. It did not matter if the powers came from a mutant, a cyborg, or a battle suit. He was able to mimic any energy signature. He also attained a full understanding of how to use said ability better than the original owner of the powers. As such, he could best someone using their own powers. Other than that, Gideon was excellent when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat and several forms of armed combat. Nicodemus, Wisdom. The representative of Wisdom, Nicodemus was a lot different from his peers such as Absalom and Cruel. He had suffered centuries of pain and hardships, and yet he continued to be a caring soul. He had lived almost as long as the Swiss mountains, which eventually became his home. He wore a red loose-fitted suit and had white hair. In fact, he had stereotypical wise man attire. Nicodemus joined the High Lords after banding with Garba Hissen, or Saul, and later aided Kandra in transferring her life force from her heart to a stone. He later went against her when she tried to stop in Sabah Nur's rise to power. Later, Nicodemus caught the legacy virus, which caused his pyrokinetic powers to overheat and overwhelm his physiology. As a result, he exploded from within and died. However, he was resurrected later. His powers allowed him to manipulate flames while being immune to them, but the legacy virus had turned that against him. Saul, Patience. Garbra Hussein, or Saul, was one of the first externals to experience a psychic connection with another, and in his case, it was Nicodemus. He represented Patience and was old enough to remember Pangea. He later formed the High Lords or the Externals, but before that, he was in the mountains of China where he ruled over the people with an iron fist. He sported a green and old outfit, which looked much like royal traditional Chinese wear, while sporting long tied hair and a long beard. He had 12 kids, all of whom were mortal, and he created booby trap tombs for them, following their deaths. He went on to find a crashed celestial ship, and was humbled by it. As such, he spent the next 50 years studying the ship and its alien technology. Later, tales of his infamy reached En Sabah Nur in Egypt, and slaughtered the Garba Hissin tribe. Following this, and his involvement with the externals, Saul lived a similar life as the others as he helped Kandra transfer her energy to a stone, and then sent Dr. Milbury against her to aid Sabah 
Ma Nur's rise to power. He also tried to get Cannonball to join the externals, which evidently did not work out, and ultimately, his life was claimed by the Legacy Virus before he was revived. In terms of powers, Saul can manipulate magic, creating energy blasts, levitating, shapeshifting, and manipulating fire. Or I'll drain every last ounce of his precious life. Selene, Corruption. She has been quite a menace to the externals. She was born in Central Europe after the ocean swallowed Atlantis and before the rise of the Sons of Arius, 17,000 years ago. As she was born, her mother passed away, prompting the tribal elders to ask her mother's people to themselves in the name of Selene. As such, their lives gave her sustenance. From the get-go, Selene had been power-hungry and overly ambitious. For example, she plotted to sacrifice everyone in Rome during the Roman Empire to acquire godly powers. Later, she used a Roman senator named Eliphas, who she had brought to power for her personal benefit. He was made to fall from grace, after which she exploited his weakness, offering him immortality and eternal love. But only if he helped her sacrifice the people in Rome. He was then made to draw symbols across Rome using his own blood to aid Selene's ritual. However, he sent word of his mouth by telling the slave girl about the whole proceeding. Ultimately, the authorities captured Selene and the senator, and they were all almost burnt at the stake. Right before the moment, Selene used the flames to kill her executioners. She then took away Eliphas's life force for betraying her, turning him into some sort of vampire. In the modern era, she lived in Nova Roma, which is a hidden city in Brazil. She became their dark priestess and gained followers when the new mutants discovered her. She was imprisoned, but not for long, as she escaped to New York City, where she was stopped by the X-Men. She also became a part of the externals. She sported long black hair, with a fitted black outfit. During a certain event, she started to kill her peers for their life force. The X-Force tried to stop her, but she escaped once again. In terms of powers, Selene was infamous for her ability to absorb life forces, turning the victim's body to dust. She could also gain psychic control over said victim's mind. Her absorbed powers allowed her to gain superhuman strength, speed, reflexes, and endurance. She could also perform telekinetic feats in pyrokinesis, projecting heat and flame from her body. Other than that, Selene was a telepath of the highest order, and yet she had more powers to show off, such as sorcery and the ability to manipulate shadows and darkness. Apocalypse Evolution. We have mentioned this over and over again, and it is finally time for us to talk about him. En Sabah Nur, or Apocalypse, was born thousands of years ago in Egypt. His hideous appearance resulted in him getting abandoned. Meanwhile, a ruthless nomad found him and adopted him because of a prophecy. Unfortunately, Sabah Nur was forced to be a slave, and he adopted the philosophy of the survival of the fittest. As his mutant powers developed, he was able to turn the tables on his masters and rise to the top. Later, the Celestials found him and used organic and celestial technology to give him godlike powers. He soon became someone who was worshipped as a god by many people around the world. He struck down the horsemen of the apocalypse and occasionally went in a regenerative rest to extend his lifespan. He would awaken and influence history in several ways, and one such event that broke his slumber was the increased mutant population. As he rose once again, he gave birth to a war between mutants and humans, bringing the X-Men against him. As as an external, his rise to power was supported by others. In terms of powers, Apocalypse's powers have evolved over the centuries, and he was even exposed to techno-organic viruses that he assimilated into his body. He could do anything and everything, performing feats such as teleportation, psionic manipulation, telekinesis, levitation, telepathic control, manipulation, cyberpathy, biomorphic celestial energy manipulation, you name it. Cannonball, Hope. And finally, we close the list with Cannonball. Born as Sam Guthrie in Kentucky, Cannonball used to work in a coal mine to help his family as his father had died. One day, he got trapped in a collapsing mine shaft, and his friend was in danger as well. To save him, he unconsciously unlocked his mutant powers. Eventually, he was made to be a part of the Hellfire Club, and made to attack the new mutants. However, during the key moment, Sam rebels against his enforcer, catching Charles Xavier's attention, who asks him to join his team. And so he does, thus becoming the Cannonball 
Cannonball. He sported a gold and teal suit with goggles and blonde hair. He was later sensed as an external following his death, and you already know what happens next. In terms of powers, Cannonball could generate thermal chemical energy from his skin to launch his body into the air like a rocket. He could even control the directions maneuvering himself at will. He could even use his energy to blast at his opponents or to defend himself from attacks. I want you to feel the full reach. Marvelous Verdict. Come to think of it, the likes of Cruel, Selene, and Apocalypse, aside most of the externals, are not evil, yet they partake in activities that will technically be considered antagonistic. But if you look at things from their perspective, you will realize that these are beings who have been living since eons, and they will continue to do so. As such, there is really not much to do. Time does not have a limit, and there has to be a prolonged objective to give their lives a purpose. Controlling world events from afar seems to be a successful way to pass time. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.